The same goes for print resolution as went for web resolution. I want as much data as possible without exceeding what I need. So we want that kind of ideal zone of having enough pixels but not too many. And anything below that ideal will start to lower the image quality. And so if I want 300 pixels per inch in my image when I'm looking at it on screen, and I have 290 pixels per inch, I probably won't notice any deterioration of image quality. But if I get down to 150, you'll start to see a noticeable shift in the image. And then if I cut that in half again and show you 72 resolution, it becomes more blurry. And then if I get down to 50, it looks really blurry, just like what happened on the web. I want to point out that web resolution at 72 will perfectly fine, but if I go to print the same exact image from the web on a printing press, it'll be blurry and pixelated. It has to do with the way that your eye interprets images. If I look at something on screen, uh, I kind of get this artificial uh, quality bump by the illumination of the light. It kind of blurs the edges around images and things, and it allows me to see better quality images with less data. But if I print something physically on paper, I don't really have that same benefit. And so my, my eye, the human eye, um, can see 300 ppi as being the correct resolution or the correct quality for it to look natural to me. Anything lower than that, will start, I'll start to be able to see that I'm not actually seeing a robot, but I'm seeing the interpretation of a robot. When you go to set your resolution, there are a couple steps that you need to take, and I would like to emphasize that you should not cut corners and you should not skip any of these steps because they're all important. And the number one thing that students will get wrong over and over and over and over and over again this semester is the inability to effectively crop your images to the size and the resolution that you want. And so I'm going to go through this, but before we do, we need to open up an image in Photoshop. And so I'm going to go to my supplied images here, and I will include them under the, the lecture when you go to watch that. And let's open, hmm, which one do I want? We'll do the carrots. Uh, May 2016 vacation number 19. I'm going to open that by right-clicking, open with in Photoshop. You could also go into Photoshop and you could choose File Open. You'll notice that when I go to launch it, this is just a random image that I pulled off of my digital camera and it doesn't have an embedded profile which we covered in our previous lecture. So I want to make sure that I'm converting the document's colors to the working space that I determined to be right. And so the embedded profile is sRGB, IEC, blah blah blah. But the working profile, the one that I decided that is the right one, is Adobe RGB, and that's what I want all of your images to be for our class. So I'm going to select OK, and it will open the image. Before we move forward to the next video, I would like you to save a copy, file save as. I'm just going to toss mine on the desktop for now. And I want you to save it as a Photoshop file because it becomes a Photoshop working file. And this is the file we're going to do all of our editing in. And then uh, you can move on to the next video.